जय जय सुरनायक जन सुखदायक प्रणत पाल भगवंता गोद्विज हितकारी जय सुरारी सिंधु सुता प्रिय कंता पालन सुर धरणी अद्भुत करणी मर मन जान कोई जो सहज कृपाला दीन दयाला कर अनुग्रह सोई कर अनुग्रह सोई जय जय अविनाशी सब घटवासी व्यापक परमानंदा अभिगत गोती तम चरित पुनी तम माया रहित अति अनुरागी बिगत मोह मुनी बासर द्यावि गुण गण गावि जयति सच्चिदानंदा जयति सच्चिदानंदा जे ही सृष्टि उपाई बनाई संग सहायन दूजा ओ कर घारी चिंत हमारी जानिय भगति न पूजा जो भव भय बंजन मुनि मन रंजन गंजन विपति बरूधा मन बच क्रम वाणी छाड़ी सयानी शरण सकल सुर जूता शरण सकल सुर जूता सारद श्रुति शेषा जाच कहो कोई नहीं जाना जी दीन पिया रे वेद पुकारे द्रव सो श्री भगवाना भगवानिधि मंदर सब विधि सुंदर गुण मंदिर सुख पुंजा मुनि सिद्ध सकल सुर परम भयातुर नमत नाद पद कंजा नमत नाद पद कंजा जय जय अविनाशी घटवासीपक परमानंदा अभिगत गोती तम चरित पुनीतम माया रहित रागी बिरागी अति अनुरागी विगत मोह मुनि वृंदर दयावि गुण गण गावि जयति सच्चिदानंदा जयति सच्चिदानंदा एवरीथिंग दैट इज शेयर टुडे बी इन सर्विस टू गॉड्स लाइट to god's love and if this one has to speak any words may they be only by his will
only in service to him. May this man be relevant. May it not be about anything that he has shared. May it only be in praising God and remembering Him, in loving Him with all our hearts. Something is coming to say, and uh, hopefully it will be short. Uh, whether you like it or not, whether you can do about anything about it or not, the fact is that the Atma lives within your self, within the higher self. It lives within that. Because everything is only within that. So it is there. Now, by its very nature, for most of us it is unperceivable. Unperceivable. That is the nature of the light of God's presence, which is Atma or Holy Spirit. Now, by the nature of His grace, when He sees fit, then He may reveal Himself to be the primordial vibration, the primordial presence, the primordial light in your heart. In that revelation, does it change its nature from unperceivable to perceivable? Not really. But there is a slight element of now recognition which we can claim and say, but my presence is here. This Atma's presence is here. The sense I am is here. Now, independent of that, it is important to always remember that He is here, that Atma is here. Independent of what experience you are having or not, this forgetting of God's presence which is within ourselves is always with us in that way. is all that Maya has been designed for. And what is being asked for, at one level is the most difficult, and at another level it is the simplest.
So let's say for a moment that nobody has had this insight about the Atma within. Because any way that everyone who has had it also has always some element of doubt. So let's suppose that nobody has had this. It is just always unperceivable. It cannot be found in any experiential way, let's suppose. But somebody who you trust tells you that it is there and that somebody is usually the teacher or the master, whatever we call them. Now that news for us should be life changing because the teacher also usually tells us that to live with him to me means to not live with yourself anymore. So basically to get over yourself is to be with him. And that is the whole endeavor of spirituality, getting over ourselves to be with him. But suppose you said that I want to for myself be with him. Then the mind has you in a very comfortable place for itself and very uncomfortable for yourself. Because you will feel like the intention is good. I'm only saying I want to be with him. But the emphasis on the is on the me trying to be with him. Don't worry. And that me is, uh, in fact, going to just pull you in towards itself. And not allow you to be with his presence. So, giving up on ourselves is required for us to be with God. And all of us have had those experiences at one time or the other, even as teenagers, you fall in love with someone, you're not bothered about yourself at least for a few days or at least a few hours. You're only concerned about the beloved. Concerned in what way? With every aspect of your being. It's like your heart yearns for them, your feelings are all about love for them, your mind is only thinking about them. The memory is only giving you imagery of them. And everywhere you go, you, you feel like, ah, you saw them somewhere. Hmm? Is it very old school, this type of love? <laughs> but this is the type of love that is helpful, required, Whichever way you want to put that. So the center of gravity of our lives moves away from the me, me, me to the him, him, him. The attempt is to become empty of ourselves, to make space, to make room for God.
Now, look at it this way. Suppose that you have just one room and in that room there is only one bed. Only God can sleep on it or you can sleep on it. What will you do? You will say, can I share? But you can't share. You, you will say, okay, can I sit at the edge of the bed and hold on to his toenail? Yes, that you can do. That much space is all right for now. So make the bed of your life, make the purpose of your life about his light, his love, his presence, his grace, his virtues. Your mind is telling you, I can't do it. But you can do it. How to do it? The two methods of how to do it are to surrender to love, to serve. That is one method, which is the bhakti method. And the second method is to just truly, sincerely inquire into the nature of who you are. Either way, you will empty yourself of yourself and leave the space for him. And these are not mutually exclusive. Both are available and both are ultimately the same. But one question that is important to get over is, but what about me? And that what about me comes in various shapes and sizes. One shape is, am I doing this right? And that question usually is in the forgetting that he is the greatest intelligence in the world. <laughs> Let's look at it another way. So, some of us have children or we have at least nieces, nephews, some children we have been exposed to. So as parents, at least um, when the child starts blabbering, uh, both parents are hearing, they are hearing, whatever the child may be blabbering, we are saying, oh, he said Papa. The mom will say, oh, he said Mama. You see? So God is like that. It's much more loving than even that. Uh, so suppose if you got your prayer wrong, you are doing it all wrong. You are saying the opposite, but your intention is to love him, to be with him. Then don't ever feel like God doesn't know that. He will feel like whatever you are doing, you are doing for him anyway, unless you make it blatantly clear that you are not. So how to be with him is to keep remembering him. How to keep remembering him is to keep taking his name. So suppose you had a childhood heartthrob, maybe it is your partner, maybe it is the one who got away or whatever it is called. So how will you remember them? The name will come to you, then some imagery will start coming, some stories you will remember. And for, the, for that little point of time you may forget yourself and just be about that one. 
but the thing to remember is that in this case because it is god's name it is much more auspicious than remembering some maya fantasy so tell me one reason why whatever our situation may be we cannot take god's name and we are coming to the gyana marga in a minute can there ever be any reason and yet we don't because that is the play of maya and maya makes us doubt it creates a lack of faith can god have made it easier than this all you have to do is take his name we'll come to prayer of quiet and all those things in a minute but for now suppose you're caught up in things something something you see take his name yeah. is he going to be upset with you because you didn't take it 108 times no he's not suppose you're having a very busy day but throughout the day you try to remember him that's the best you can do as long as it is the best that you can do simple anything stops us no matter what the situation is whatever has happened in our life we can say ram can we not jesus ram malla krishna kali durga whatever we want na vai guru yeah then why don't we so deepening in love for god is to take remember him to be with him more than you remember yourself and are concerned about yourself and if that suddenly seem like too much of a step up it's okay don't worry we'll get there slowly this much is okay any difficulty in this no maya will play we will forget suppose we forget 99% of the time or we just not interested we feeling disenchanted uh, disillusion whatever this this whatever everything but little bit yes so start like that whenever you get the opportunity just remember him or remember that foolish man told you that he is there with you and you can pick the name that resonates with you the most so for respect or love for this foolish man to do it even if you don't have faith start with at least once a day okay can we do one thing can we say that uh, i heard that mother teresa told someone that all you have to do when you start is when you start your day say good morning god this one that's all you can do any trouble anyone says no i can't do now you may say that first thing in the morning alarm was ringing i was getting late something something okay then whenever you remember say good morning god you do hmm? you can all do now if 
this was good enough advice for mother teresa to give it was good enough by far for me to give anyone so everybody with me in this at least this we will do come what may yes once a day at least and start your day say good morning god yeah easy now you will find that as you do this sincerely so this is all you have to do that's it huh? <laughs> that's all you have to do as sincerely as possible when you wake up in the morning say good morning god good morning ram ji good morning krishna ji ram ram hmm? then if you do it sincerely this automatically you will find that you start getting a few minutes here and there to be with him how does it work it's all his his ways we can't say just in a mere remembrance of him once a day you will find that now you have some few moments a day where maya is not really pulling you in you have that space and with simplicity with no stress no <coughs> grasping no trying to achieve anything no experience nothing with the innocence of a child just remember his name <coughs> her name ha he mata bhavani durga kali whatever you want to say he is her name holy mother mary whatever you want to say uh, just a few times she has only made the space he has only made the space there is no stress needed from your side all you did was put that effort to say good morning yes and if anyone has complaints you can bring them to me that you said this for a week but you didn't get there was no space being made in your life to remember him for the rest of the day yes so now you said okay now this space came you don't know where it came from because you thought your life was so busy so difficult all of that you're so caught up in your worries but now suddenly you start getting space if you use that in this way then what will happen you will get even more space you will be able to take to remain in remembrance of him more and more like that naturally then you will find that many things you will just want to take to him instead of dealing with them yourself so surrender or prayer which sounds like big things for us to do will just start to happen you will say that i can't deal with this stuff it's please please you help me life is too difficult this relationship is too difficult my family is too difficult my work is too difficult my money situation is too difficult my body is in too difficult a situation i can't really deal with this my teacher told me that you are here and you are all powerful or all intelligent you please do this oh you please tell me what to do i don't know so you start off simply you remain simple that's the key you have to remain simple the minute you become complicated you will lose all of this the minute you start to understand too much the minute you start to claim that this is what's happening so remain simple you started like an innocent child god is leading you step by step you taking one step he is taking the proverbial 100 steps towards you 
then you started to pray in this way where you're taking everything to him and you're finding that on most days when you do that then life it seems like such a burden such a difficulty is not that difficult not that troublesome there are other days where maya will be in full force and will try to get you away from all of this it will say it's all rubbish none of these works there is no god god's presence is not it it may even use spiritual teachings itself to block you from living in this innocent sort of way so now more and more you will find that in your life his name is being taken his remembrance is being had you find more yourself more and more interested if you were watching a lot of news earlier or something earlier now you go into youtube and looking for something which is about god something which is more about god all this is signs of deepening love a deepening relationship yeah. like that and then those moments you find sometimes you find there's great joy great peace sometimes you feel like it's very bland nothing is happening you're just mechanically taking his name don't worry just keep your innocence you don't have to judge yourself so like this the time will increase more and more where you get somehow he makes it time is under his dominion so he will make it so that you will have more and more space you will find that between your work meetings between your phone calls between your social media between all of this you're starting to get now suddenly from somewhere there is time that you can remember him you can be with him so just very simply easily it is unfolding in that way then you may find that many times you are not even realizing but you are praying if you are using the ads for example earlier it may have been a struggle to try and say always oh, always try and remember the name you see now you may find that in the middle of a work meeting you are finding that the mantra is saying itself in your head to start with so it is gone from japa to ajapa so it's taken a life of its own don't focus too much on the terminology because then you feel like have i got there when will i get there all that is not so important so think of this as that love relationship you're deepening so much in that love that sometimes even during work you are just thinking of your beloved that happens naturally okay like that then as you deepen more and more you allow that you keep your innocence most important is to guard your innocence if you become a claimer if you become a sharer if you become somebody special then you will it will become about you again and the innocence of your love will vanish and maya will start to pull you back in so as it you allow it to happen in this gentle simple way you will find that the center of that remembrance will switch from your head to your heart so that ajapa japa which is happening naturally mentally like your mind was fully immersed in that then you will find that it comes to a deeper place a remembrance is from a deeper place and it's quite attractive quite beautiful so you want to spend more and more time now like that yeah. 
to hear the name of the Lord in your heart. It's not, again, it's not an achievement. It's nothing that you can do. And it's no claim on your specialness if this is happening with you. It's all only His grace. There is no such thing as an advanced spiritual seeker. Because all the advancement only comes from God. It's mostly about His grace. It makes us deepen in His love. Then what will happen is that this remembrance may become subtler and subtler in terms of the physical quality of it, in terms of the name, in in an audible way, and just become that you enjoy spending time in your heart. within yourself. Doesn't matter what experience you're having. Doesn't matter what you're seeing or not seeing. So you have become what? Antarmukhi. Which is inward facing. You went from outward facing to more and more now inward facing. And most of you in satsang will be like that. You would rather spend time within than outside. What did you do? You just did the good morning part. So far you haven't done anything at all except that, that much. The rest of the space he has created, you use that space. You have not got caught up when Maya calls you as much as you would in the past. That is the extent of what we can say, what we did. So now you started enjoying your time. You can't explain to the world what you are doing. The world may say, you seem a bit lost. What's going on with you? Are you finding something over there? No, I don't know. I just like sitting in this way with myself, in my heart. Along the way, you will come across many things which will try to distract you from living like this and many things which will also try to help you. It almost seems like the Mahabharata is that play. You see, Maya tries to pull you to the gravitation field of the me and God's Atma is pulling you back within itself. And the more you learn to follow the Atma, mostly in silent ways, the more you will deepen in your discipleship of the Spirit, in the discipleship of the Atma. And that is what spirituality actually is. Spirituality is a name for this process, to become a disciple of the Spirit and to deepen in love of God's presence which is called the Spirit. So now, what does this remind you of? It reminds, hopefully it reminds you of Atma Vichara, because the end point is the same. See, and we probably, most of you are very familiar with that process, so 
when you ask yourself often enough who am i your mind becomes silent because there's no answer true answer coming from there and you find yourself getting deeper and deeper immersed in a deeper place where intuitive insight is flowing that is exactly the same as coming to this a silent prayer the japa has gone to a heart prayer so you come to the same point as advaita sadhana atma vichara come to the same so sitting here in your heart all the deepening of insight love servitude service loving our brothers and sisters kindness all this flows from here anything difficult so far in what i've said you want me to talk about the gyana part it's clear no? so instead of taking god's name you can do both whatever you feel like but instead of suppose you were to say instead of this what can i do you say who am i the mind gives you an answer and you say who witnesses that who witnesses that thought so all mental answers are de- dealt with in this way and we start to rely on heart knowledge intuitive insight and we remain over there so same way it will create the space for itself to deepen so you can start the day by asking sincerely but who am i if you feel yes as sincerely as you can when you come to this point all the paths merge so whatever other path there may be of spirituality It's all meant to bring you to this point of sheer presence of God's light, sheer love of being with Him in this way. Whether we use these terms to describe it or not doesn't matter. Some will just say, "I love meditating," or "I love uh, spending time in inquiry." or taking japa or whatever you may say the terminology is not important but nobody can love any of those things for themselves isn't it like who wants to just sit and meditate on something huh? suppose you supposed to meditate on your sixth chakra or something just who wants to sit and do that for like if there was nothing holy about it if there was nothing deeper about it who wants to sit and take god's name if god's name did not bring us to his presence is it so who wants to sit and ask who am i who am i as if it's a intellectual question if it was giving if it was not giving us some deeper insight from a supernatural place nobody wants to do any of these things but because we meet something which is out of this world out of the realm of maya whatever path you pick leads you to god's presence which is out not in this universe but it is within yourself so that's why most of the world won't understand you because what are you doing you're wasting your whole life and you're wasting the whole life one of you is right isn't it <laughs> but one of you is definitely wrong because you're choosing to spend your time in that which is out of this world and many of your the people around you feel like time is only meant to be used for things of this world so that is the whole maya versus atma conundrum
So then you come to a point in your life that you start to gauge everything through the lens of how it is in your heart. Whether you are feeling deeper and deeper connected in your heart or whether there are things, your own actions or things, temptations that you are giving into which make you feel disconnected in your heart. And that disconnection could come simply and you know, all of you know that I am working on this from just a simple irritation. Is it? it could just come, I am feeling God's presence so deeply right now in this moment is it? that all these words are an outpouring of that. But if uh, Sri Ram over there, not Lord Sri Ram, <laughs> The one who's attending satsang uh, was making some strange noises. He was just doing. There's a story by Therese, no? uh, Saint Therese. So if he were just making some noises, you know, I'm talking about God. He's just going on making those noises, you see? and just like uh, getting so irritated with that. Then what is the atmosphere in my heart? Just with this minor irritation, it could be a split second. Yeah. And you can come to a place where to come back to that inner climate again could take a whole day. Yeah. So what is it to follow God's will? To not lose His presence in your heart. How do you know you are following God's will? Because His presence keeps deepening. His love, His light is showing you. If you are not hearing His will in words, that's alright. But that inner compass shows you. But for this we need to have sat in that silence for enough time through whatever method our teacher has told us. Otherwise, we can't sense this climate at all. Huh? You can t taste it hopefully, uh, by God's grace, that if you find something, if you are sitting in satsang hall, then when you leave, you have to see when you your inner climate changes from that. So what if you are finding that irritation is coming, <laughs> anger is coming, lust is coming, greed is coming, wanting to humiliate another, wanting to defend yourself, all of this is not good for our inner climate. No? It just makes us inside, con constricted. And, you know. So what is one to do then? Yes, remember God, take His name or do your inquiry. Who doesn't like what He is doing? So because this ego, this pride is mythical, it doesn't have any real substance, it dissolves either way, in remembrance of God or in asking yourself sincerely, So in that way we can retain our satsang within ourselves and the more satsang you retain in your heart, that means you are keeping the right company inwardly, the more the satsang will take momentum in your life. The more you give in to pride, irritation, anger, to be seen as special, to uh, to be selfish, to want things for yourself, all of these things, the more is the, the kusang, which is the bad company, which will spread. So bad company can be inside out or outside in, just like good company. By coming to satsang, outwardly you may come to a satsang inwardly, 
or being in satsang inwardly may bring you to an outer satsang. Both may happen. But it is the same for bad company as well. If you are getting too caught up in your anger, your pride, your fear, your desire, all of these things, then all the complexity of the outer experience also starts to change. The complexion of the outer experience also starts to change. See, so even the small, so remember I am just talking about the small, small thing. Small thing like irritation. I only get irritated. See? But that irritation could be enough to block your light, to block God's light. It's not all right. Don't give yourself the license to cut off God's light in your heart. Don't give Maya the license to do that. Come what may, no matter what the provocation, be with God. So then what happens when you deepen more and more like this? It will become such a beautiful deepening, a beautiful relationship that that will become primary in your life. But don't feel that because that has become primary, the love for the ones who are appearing in front of you outside in the world will reduce, it will only increase. And what is love? God said love is not love unless it involves God. You see, if you want God to bless them, you pray for them, then you love your neighbor as yourself. That's a tough one. And I'm working on that as well. I'm working on everything actually. I'm just a beginner. But it sounds quite straightforward to say, love your neighbor as yourself. But it's so difficult because uh, I'm the most important one here. And I don't mean it in satsang and I'm sharing satsang. In any situation I go to, for me, I am the center of the story. So that central character, through bhakti, through jnana, changes to God, more and more. And then we can love our neighbor as ourselves. So in the jnana path you may say, you may be brutal and say, one floating clump of flesh is the same as another floating clump of flesh. What is the big deal? Uh, just because there is centrality in terms of sensory perception doesn't make this one any better than anyone else. See? Or in the as a bhakta you may say that I see God in everyone. God is everywhere. So if there is Atma here, then there is Atma there as well. If God is here, then God is there as well. How can I not love my brother or sister? How can I not serve them? So whichever way you come to it, you dissolve the separation. I mean, the separation starts to dissolve the more you love God. So as you keep deepening in this, then you may find that in your inquiry, in your prayer, you may recognize that the true oneness of yourself being one with God
So Gyani may say report, but the, the, only the words of the report are different. So Gyani may say that I saw that I was always that. I saw that I was always that. And a Bhakta may say that I merged into him. So all of this life is about that recognition of oneness or that merging into him, whichever way we look at it. But don't make the mistake which most of us make or made which is to think that it's a one-time thing. Because Maya keeps playing. And the world is full of more stories of Jnanis who came to two inside but then lost their way than Jnanis who came to two inside and didn't lose their way. Maybe in history they have forgotten, but if you look at recent history, then you will find that very, very many teachers with authentic experiences then lose their way because of pride. And authentic uh, insight, authentic love to begin with. But soon everything starts to switch between from God to me, what about me, what about my name, who is looking at me? Who is important here? Me. So we must not fall into those traps. The so potential of Maya is to pull us, still pull us back in. That's why we have so many stories of Naraji, Vishwamitra. There's so many people who, great sages, we shouldn't even call them people who got tempted in spite of being highest in terms of love and knowledge of God. Like Narad, Naradji, he's Bhakti Sutras. No? And yet he got tempted when Krishna ji sent him to the river to fetch some water for him. He got tempted by worldly relationship. So we have to be careful of these and remain in this way. So when Hanumanji said uh, that when I take myself to be the body, I am your servant, when I take myself to be the Atma, I am a part of you. And when I see my reality, I see that I am one with you. you see? Now, when we hear this, we are usually hearing it as a progression. I start off in servitude, then I progress to part of God, and then I am becoming God, one with God. You see, now that is very dangerous. To hear this like that is very dangerous because it seems like a linear progression. Is it? But it's not like that. It is concurrently like that. Is it? There's an aspect of myself will still take myself to be the body. If there's some strong body pain, I will say, okay, now I have to go, I have to go take some medicine. Is it? Is it? So, it is that achinta veda veda that the recognition is there i am that and yet there is a potential which gets activated many times a day it's no longer potential of taking myself to be somebody separate and on the only safe 
place safe refuge for that somebody separate is to be in servitude of God. So Hanumanji is not saying that I started like that, you see, and then I saw that I am the Atma, therefore I am a limb or a part of you, you see, the Paramatma Atma relationship. And then I saw that I am one with the Paramatma itself. Now I am one with you, Lord, let's sit on the same throne or get me a throne which is same as you. Did Hanumanji say like that? He should have, no? That's what many Advaitins today will say that why should I bow down to God because I am the same, I am that. You see, it is true. But Hanumanji is saying all three things about himself presently. And he is probably still saying the same things about himself presently. Are you getting what I mean? So don't feel like it is a progression. Although the the deepening of our spirituality may lead progressively to those for those insights to come. It doesn't mean that we have to now confuse that part of ourselves which still takes ourself to be a separate body mind to then force that claim onto it of being that and therefore saying give me a throne as big as God's. Is it complicated what I'm saying? I'm just saying, so why didn't Hanuma, why did Hanumanji want to sit at uh, Lord Ram's feet? Even after he recognized that he is one with God. That's the only contemplation that will lead to what I'm trying to explain to all of you. So this achinta veda veda, which means that unfathomable, non-comprehensible oneness and distinction, or distinction and oneness, is the human condition. But one important thing to contemplate in this is that if Hanumanji did not ever have insight that he is Atma huh? or ever have insight that he is one with God. He just felt like he is God's servant and he will serve him with all his love and heart and everything. Would he be less Hanumanji because of that? He is still revered as the biggest devotee of God, as the biggest servant of God. Is he? But suppose that he came to oneness with God, to the recognition of oneness with God, but left the servitude, then would he still be Hanumanji? Ashabri Ma waited for Ramji to come, 60, 70 years, I don't know how many years. And after he came, she's like, yeah, I've met myself, I'm one with you, come. <laughs> I am not feeding you all these bears. I see you now, I see that we are one. Then she would not be Shabri anymore. And I'm not at all undervaluing the insight of oneness. That is what we are all here for, to recognize that, to merge into that or to recognize the union already, whichever way our life's path will unfold. That is the goal, but we should not feel like we have gone from lower to higher. Servitude of God, servitude towards God is already the highest. So it only gets better and better with the addition of these insights. What does the ego want to do? It wants to go towards kingship, towards lordship. Yeah. What's that old song? Everyone wants to, everybody wants to rule the world. Yeah. That is what the pride wants. And that is when we come to the dangerous place of thinking that whatever I want from my mind is God's will. 
See, that which God has given us to, for us to, in freedom, express our love for Him, because a forced love would never be love anyway, then we take that and make it into a claim of ourselves as somebody special. How did you get here? How did we get here? Just by saying, good morning God. Can it be like that? Can be like that. Especially if you start the day in this way, invoking God's presence, being with God instead of immersing yourself in egoic thing, you will see that your life changes. Hmm? So, I remember first time seeing a photo of Bhagwan or seeing a photo of Anandaima. It's a bit, I don't know if you all felt the same way, it's very beautiful, but it's a bit unnerving also, no? because they seem like, like the eyes have something strange about them or something is not usual. Is it? Uh -huh. But what happens is that, uh, by God's grace, when we become, they became inward facing, then many times, although it may look like they're interested in things of the world, they're more interested in the heart temple. So then the arts having that, at least in photographs, it seems, it seems a bit strange. Yeah? It can seem like they're like human, but there's something strange in the way they look at us, no? or something like that. Have you all noticed this? In this photo and that photo of Ma. No, many like that, it's like that. They just, you get so used to, you see, because the waking state is there, you can't really avoid it from showing up. But you're so uninterested in that, and your, all your, not attention, but your focus in some way is inward facing that you have that kind of look. And I see in all of you that it happens. Uh, if you're in satsang, when, you, when, you, when you're being inward facing, then even the outpouring in this outer way is apparent. So when you start to live like this, then your presence becomes satsang. You become good company for the world. And what is that good company? That because you are so immersed in his presence, your being around, even in this maya, by God's grace, creates an outpouring which becomes attractive to those who are in love with God themselves or, or getting in that direction or at least have that intention. So it's not so much about the words that you're sharing, it's not so much about the correctness of your scriptural knowledge. Just that something that is outpouring from you 
is attracting those who intend to live this life in God's love, in God's life. So many of you want to share satsang in some way, you just have to spend more and more time with God inwardly. When God creates the circumstances, God brings the people. Now we don't know whether you'll be like Moses at 80 or uh, at uh, or Adi Shankara at 16. We don't know which way it will unfold. But these things can't really be planned. And when they are planned, they usually messed up anyway. just unfolds naturally. Hmm. So much for not speaking much. It's a hypocrite. So shall we read something? Keep no sun, that's thank you. Some of you have seen this tool. Um, let's see one of the searches. So, this, uh, shall I share this? Okay, so this tool is very, very raw, but um, I love it um, and what gifts it's given me so far are very beautiful. So, we just search for how should we pray. So, the first response is, uh, all these books have been fed into the system. So, um, from this book about Catholic Christianity, the answer is, uh, the very best answer to when to pray is now. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This is from Corinthians. The present is the only time there is. For the past is the time that is no longer. And the future is the time that is not yet. Sound like Advaita Vedanta? <laughs> so one of the things that really attracts me to this project is that I want to be able to show, show all of those who are truly interested that there is no separation because of religion. All true religions are pointing to the same truths and many times in the exact same way. 
so there is no need for any pride or anything which religion makes us caught up in that everything is about love for god about the presence of atma which is the spirit the words are not that important so as we keep adding to this tool my hope is that as we look for these common topics we will get something from uh, vedanta something from uh, bhakti something from christianity something from islam something from sikhism something from sufism <laughs> see all of this to see that really so if for example i said to you that bhagwan said the present is the only time there is for the past is the time that is no longer and the future is the time that is not yet could have accepted it easily is it is not difficult okay then um, they say we should learn to pray in the events of each day for it is in the present that we encounter him not yesterday nor tomorrow but today hmm? oh that today you would hearken to his voice you see pray later may be wise but pray later is not yeah. and we should pray here as well as now and about the here and how not only about large far away abstract thing ah very important point so many points got made in that simple sentence let me just repeat that we should pray here as well as now okay Yes, one simple meaning of that could be wherever you are. Don't have to wait for the appropriate spot. Don't have to wait for the appropriate place. So every now is good enough, and every here is good enough. That's one way to look at it. Then they also said it in a different way. And about the here and now, you see, and they explain that further by saying not only about large, far away abstract things, you see. it is right and good to pray so that the coming of the kingdom of justice and peace may influence the march of history but it is just as important to bring the help of prayer into humble everyday situation uh, so we may pray for ram rajya uh, prabhu tum kab aoge because this world is really suffering from a deep kaliyug we may pray like that when will you come lord the, the world is really suffering in its current state is it's good to pray about these things but it's also good to say okay now uh, my child is not understanding what i'm trying to tell them and i feel like they're not going in the right way by going to this party tonight so please help it's all right both are good is it so to pray in every here and every now for that which is about the here and now as well as about the big things beautiful point okay so there's also the simple translation contemporary translation which captures the whole thing which is the best answer to the question when should we pray is simply now the scriptures remind us that this moment is the right time for salvation the present moment is the only one we truly possess the past is gone and the future remains uncertain we ought to practice praying in the midst of our daily experiences for it is in the present that we truly meet the divine not in the past or future we must heed the call to listen to his voice today while it may be prudent to postpone financial payments it is not wise to delay prayer i have not said that part about financial payments so <laughs> additionally our prayers should not only focus on distant grand issues they should also address the immediate needs of our lives praying for justice and peace is essential but it's equally important to seek divine assistance in our everyday circumstances okay. uh, so just that temple temple priest metaphor is quite nice whatever life brings it you take it to god whatever prasad god wants to bring back to them be the instrument of that that's all that we can be but don't forget god here and now and make him a part of every here and now 
Okay, this another one. We need both kinds. The most important thing about prayer is not how we do it, but that we do it. It's a very important thing. The single most important answer to, to the question, how to pray, is begin. Just do it. We learn to do it by doing it. It's a treasure. These words are, are, are a huge treasure. The single most important answer to the question, how to pray, is begin. Just do it. We learn to do it by doing it, not by merely reading or thinking about doing it. Then they say, and I'm sorry, I don't know who the author is, but I'll look it up later. Prayer is work, a cooperative work of ourselves and God. Uh, remember what um, Ma Teresa said, um, Saint Teresa of Avila? She said that if you let go of yourself, then God works on your heart. Is it so the letting go part we have to do? His work in our hearts he has to do. So in that way, it is a cooperative work of ourselves and God. We cannot do it without God and God will not do it without us. Why? Because he's made us free to either love him or not. In the overall execution of his will, his will is free enough to make us free to love him or not. Prayer is both a gift of grace and a determined response on our part. So important. Like many times we get into this, I can't do it. It's not happening. I just can't do it. What can't you do? You can't say Ram once. You can always do it. So many times Maya blocks us in this way. Or in the Christian context, you may call it screw tape or the devil or something like that. It blocks us in this way. That they say, no, no, you just can't pray. I just can't do it. But you can. What is being asked of you is just to remember God. Remember his name. Okay, okay so it always presupposes effort. Prayer is a battle against whom? Against ourselves and the wiles of the tempter. Tempter is Maya, who does all he can do to turn away man, turn man away from prayer, away from union with God. So man again, don't worry about gender, it's not about gender. Against ourselves, against the wiles of the temper, tempter, who does all that he can do to turn man away from prayer, away from the union with God. Right? Okay, let's go to another source. So this is from the way of the pilgrim and the pilgrim continues his way. Beautiful book. There you have brought together in great wisdom everything that is necessary and desirable for our life. What a promise. We have brought together everything in great wisdom, everything that is necessary and desirable for our life. Just by doing what? By praying. Then there are some specific things about some specific chapters. How to succeed in prayer, to be bold and hope, ask, seek, knock. Locally. Ah, this one is very, very nice. Only when we humbly acknowledge that we do not know how to pray as we ought to, can we truly begin to engage in the practice of prayer. Is that beautiful? Only when we humbly acknowledge that we do not know how to pray as we ought to, can we truly begin to engage in the practice of prayer. Why does it always feel like that? Some of us have been praying for a long time. 
can we really say i know how to pray nobody can really say i know how to pray because it's only that tiny bit in the method and 99% in grace and because because that grace is indeterminable we can never say that i have the best method now to pray or i know how to pray just in the same way that we can never say i know how to inquire as there so many people who were doing inquiry for decades still come to satsang sometimes and say am i doing it right is it because un- unlike worldly mechanical processes where you can say that if you do this much effort then this much push will happen to that object in spirituality we can't say that because it is spirit led it is not effort led and yet effort is needed are you getting this point that nobody can ever say i know how to pray or i know how to inquire i am a master at it because that would mean that the outcome is in their hands in their control and all of us have that experience that one day we pray one time we remember god and we are in a deep bliss and the day we pray ram 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 just mechanical and it's not it's not giving you that bliss that joy that peace so then in those days it's natural to question do i really know what i'm doing is it do i even know what i'm doing but it's not about that we can never know and to humbly acknowledge that is important because the effectiveness of prayer is grace this is so it's like the govardhan story that we may feel that we are helping krishna by holding our hand up holding govardhan up to prevent the rain from falling on us from drowning the village but he has to do it and yet both things are important we have to go and do that you see so it's a way way direct way of saying this is very important only when we humbly acknowledge that we do not know how to pray as we ought to can we truly begin to engage in the practice of prayer you see how many of you have struggled am i doing this right am i doing this right Okay, so many times uh, I also want to give you another flavor of the same thing. If you say the path of bhakti, for example, bhakti is the greatest power on this earth. It gushes from one's pure heart. it redeems and saves it purifies the heart devotion is the seed faith is the root service of saints is the shower communion with the lord is the fruit so devotion is the seed faith is the root faith gives you a uh, devotion strength service uh, service of the saints is the water shower is the is the water which is needed for growth and communion with the lord is the fruit bhakti is of two kinds apara bhakti lower type of devotion and para bhakti the highest bhakti or supreme love okay <laughs> this may be a bit strong ringing ringing bells and waving lights is apara bhakti yeah. in para bhakti there is no ritualistic worship the devotee is absorbed in god in supreme love the devotee forgets himself his self entirely so we said at the beginning it's about getting over ourselves and making room for god he has only thoughts of god para bhakti and gyana are one 
Avan, exactly the same point we made. Bhakti melts into wisdom in the end. Two have become one now. Bhakti grows gradually, just as you grow a flower or a tree in a garden. So in the Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam Mahapurana, all vratas, tirthas, yogas, sacrifices and talks of knowledge are not needed. So that's why I've taken a break from satsang. <laughs> So all um, ruts, teeths, yogas, sacrifices and talks of knowledge are not needed. Bhakti alone can grant liberation. But those who are not doing bhakti should not pay attention to the first line. So then you have neither. <laughs> so, uh, bhakti alone can grant liberation. Uh, what they are trying to say is bhakti is enough for liberation. Not bhakti alone can grant in that way. I hopefully let's read what they say. Sutta Goswami continues, Narada's conclusion glorified Bhakti and nurtured her. Then Bhakti shows us, spoke as follows, O Narada, you are very glorious and have unflinching faith in me. Thus I will always reside in your heart and never leave. O saintly person, you are most merciful. Just in a manner of moments you have removed my misery. But my, say, my sons have not regained their consciousness. Please quickly bring them back to normal. Upon hearing these words of Bhakti, Narad felt very compassionate and attempted to wake them up by shaking them with his hand. Okay, this is part of the Bhagavatam story, so it may not have the full message in it. He put his mouth to their ears and said, O oh, Jnana, wake up. O oh, Vairagya, please arise. Then he chanted the Vedic mantras the Vedanta Sutras and the Upanishads. Okay, let's see something which is self-contained. So when we go down, so I made this in the form of the seven mansions now. Where you put a search, then it gives you the responses in terms of the level. So if you say, if you look for attaining complete union with the Divine, These may be nice. So from the Narad Bhakti Sutras, it is in and around them they realize the presence of God everywhere and at all times. Every one of those mentioned in the last sutra is filled with the spirit of saints and through that with the spirit of the Lord himself. Yeah? So if you were to read this part, every one of those mentioned is filled with the spirit of saints and through that with the spirit of the Lord Himself. Would you say that this is Narad Bhakti Sutras or a Christian text? <laughs> it's all the same everywhere. They have emptied themselves so completely that they entirely live in God. So they're talking about some sages who, and the message is the same as what we are sharing in Satsang which is that we have to empty ourselves of ourselves that we can entirely live in God. They have emptied themselves so completely that they can entirely live in God. The lives of God intoxicated devotees like Pralada bear witness to this. Just as the river falling into the ocean becomes one with the ocean, even so the devotee having offered his body, mind, intellect, egotism and, and all at the feet of his beloved Lord, becomes one with him. Sarvam Vishnu Mayam Jagat. The whole world is full of Vishnu. Yeah, yeah, that, um, this experience is described in the Gita. At the close of many births, a man full of wisdom cometh on to me. Yeah. So we can, you want to drill down into this? So what is required? Offer up body, mind, intellect, <coughs> egotism. At the feet of the beloved Lord, and then we become one with Him. The whole world is full of Vishnu. So, some of these um, were imported earlier, so they're not in the new formats. There's a button there for recreate that node.
So let's read the translation of this. I offer you my truth. You are precious to me. United with reason, purified with firm self-control, having renounced sound and sensory distractions, having set aside passion and malice, living in solitude, temperate, with speech, body and mind subdued, constantly engaged in meditation and yoga, taking refuge in dispassion, having abandoned egotism, violence, arrogance, desire, anger, greed, and being selfless and peaceful, one is prepared to become the eternal. To become the eternal. By becoming one with Brahman, serene in the self, one neither grieves nor desires, remains equal towards all beings, and attains supreme devotion in me. Again from the Narad Bhakti Sutras. So from the Guru Gan Sahib Ji, uh, the simple line, he unites us with himself. He brings us onto union with himself. Let's see if we can find. Again from the Guru Gan Sahib Ji, I have tasted the supreme bliss of union with the Divine and it surpasses all worldly pleasures. In this state, I find myself free from the shackles of ego and desire, immersed in an ocean of love and truth. The experience is not fleeting. It is the essence of my being, a profound realization that transcends the limitations of the material world and connects me with the eternal. Same thing everywhere. Okay, maybe the last one on this topic. He should not leave off his practices till he merges himself, himself in the Lord in Mahabhava or Tanmaya state. Give up on this unquenchable thirst for sensual pleasure, woman, money and worldly prosperity, which is the greatest obstacle in the path of devotion, and turn your mind towards God. Here is an inexhaustible and imperishable spiritual wealth, which no dacoit can rob, a divine bliss which is not mixed with fear or pain, now everything becomes natural, effortless and automatic. That is the fruits of bhakti. Effort is necessary only as long as the ego or the feeling of separateness persists. When these are removed and the light of the divine has descended onto the devotee, he puts forth no more effort. Okay, so let's do an experiment. Let's see. We take this line, here is the inexhaustible and imperishable spiritual wealth which no dacoit can rob. Say dacoit, it will return only mostly Indian. Um, let's put uh, the earlier line. Give up this unquenchable thirst for sensual pleasure, woman, money and worldly prosperity which is the greatest obstacle in the path of devotion and turn your mind towards God. So what if we were to search for this line throughout? I want to read all of these, but let me see if I can. Hmm. What is the least similar result? Okay. 
How to find God in my heart? So the original text is from the Bible. If you seek the Lord, your God, from there, you will find him provided you search for him with all your heart and soul. When you are in distress and all these things have come upon you, even in the latter days, if you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is merciful, he will not abandon you, destroy you, or forget the covenant he made with your ancestors. Ask about the days of old. Okay, before we come there, so what's the offer here? If you turn to the Lord your God and obey his voice. So how to hear his voice? By turning towards him. You turn towards him, be inward facing and wait for him to guide you. And while his voice is not perceptible, wait for the sense of connection or disconnection that itself will guide you. The deeper you feel connected with him, that is the path of dharma. The less you feel connected with him, the, that is the path of adharma. Hmm? Okay, let's see if we can find some. So if I say the way of Sikhism, This, the first result is that is not the way, says Nanak. He's probably talking about this. He grants life to all living beings, O Lord. Please keep me according to your will. He alone knows the way who obtains it. So ask one who has obtained it, O siblings of destiny. Serve the true Guru and find peace. Without the Guru, he dies entangled in sin and corruption. The messenger of death smashes his head and humiliates him. The slanderous person is not freed from of his bonds. He is drowned slandering others. So speak the truth and realize the Lord deep within. He is not far away. Look and see him. No obstacle shall block your way. Become Guru Mukh and cross over to the other side. This is the way to cross over the terrifying world ocean. The name of the Lord, the Naam, abides deep within the body. The Creator Lord is eternal and imperishable. The soul does not die and cannot be killed. God creates and watches over all. Through the word of the Shabad, His will is manifest. He is immaculate. <clears throat> and has no darkness. Let's say embracing the divine with love and affection. From the imitation of Christ, divine love conquers all. 
and enlarges the power of the soul. If you are truly wise, you will rejoice only in me, because no one is good except God alone, who is to be praised above all things and above all to be blessed. Then the next chapter starts. Okay. Then there's something by Spurgeon. And there is a scripture called Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. That's what the, that is the intermingling that I'm hoping will happen more and more. So okay, although this passage wasn't very interesting. Then next one is nothing is sweeter than love, nothing stronger or higher or wider, nothing is more pleasant, nothing fuller, and nothing better in heaven or on earth. For love is born of God and cannot rest except in God, who is above all created, who is above all created things. So when we say follow love, follow the perfume of love, where, where does it take us? To God. Because love is born of God and cannot rest except in God. Isn't that beautiful? So the presence of love is felt that itself is a great fragrance for us to follow, to immerse in. And if you keep following the fragrance of love, you cannot be egotistical. Your pride has to dissolve in that. Then from the Guru Granth Sahib, Hug me close to you, hug me close in your embrace, O God, my Lord and Master. Consider my primal love for you, O Lord of the universe. Okay, so. If you want to make a contemplation out of this, you can make that. So this is my retirement plan. I won't be needed soon. I just I'll train it on my voice and soon on my images also and just meet. So you can make a, um, it's very primitive right now, but it will get better and better. A Lectio Divina contemplation on that verse that we read. Sources. This contemplation is inspired by the text from The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis, Lectio Divina Contemplation Lectio. Let us begin by imbibing the sacred words of Thomas Akempis from The Imitation of Christ. Divine love conquers all and enlarges the powers of the soul. If you are truly wise, you will rejoice only in me, because no one is good except God alone, who is to be praised above all things and above all to be blessed. Now again I will speak, Lord, and will not be silent. I will speak to the hearing of my God, my Lord, and my King who is in heaven. How great, O Lord, is the multitude of your mercies which you have stored up for those who love you. But what are you to those who love you? What are you to those who serve you with their whole heart? Truly beyond the power of words is the sweetness of contemplation you give to those who love you. Meditation, in this blessed meditation, we turn our thoughts to the triumph of divine love, 
a spiritual force that transcends earthly barriers to liberate the soul. This will be too hard. Nothing I can do at the moment with the conversion from text to speech, but uh, it'll get better as we go along. So then what you can do is actually go to the audio player and you can hear all of them. Okay, so we can, you get a sense of how that will be. Um, so I'm a bit unsure about one thing, which is that, should I make this so that all of you can put in the books that you want and then put in the audio that you want to hear, put in all this so that it's like a personalized system for your spiritual growth? Or do you want it to be like a common repository in this way? where all of this is here because I can make it user based or I can make it uh, broad based as well broad is one word huh? both both yes both. little more work but you can do it. see Bhagavad Gita it has the record you can choose what you want to read uh, Select the sources. No? Yeah, that is easy. That I can do. That I can do as well. But I just want to. <laughs> I, w I want to do that. Select the sources. I will. That's a practical thing to do. But first, I want just everyone to get the sense that it's all the same. <laughs> you know, because otherwise, we'll stay with the familiar. Anyway, it's too utopian. So I will be. <laughs> I will do the source selection part. Right now, there are some eighty-five sources. So. I'll probably have to categorize them and then you can pick the category where you want the search to happen. So the um, nice thing is that you don't need to know the words, it's not doing a keyword search, it's doing a vector search, it's doing a similarity search based on the vector uh, embeddings for what you're looking for. So if we say, huh? It's not that easy, yeah. It will come as we upload more. So right now if I say love for God, then because it takes the word God to not necessarily have the same meaning as Ishwara or Parmeshwara or Atma, then that's why the embedding is at a distance. But let's see. Uh, so, but if now I say, for now I'll have to make it specific. So, if I say love for God in Islam or Sufism, then it comes specific to that. Obeying Allah and His Messenger, say, O Prophet, if you sincerely love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. For Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Say, O Prophet, obey Allah and His Messenger. If they still turn away, then truly Allah does not like the disbelievers. Blessed people indeed, Allah chose Adam, Noah, the family of Abraham, the family of Imran, and above all people of their time. They are all descendants of one another, and Allah is the all-hearing, all-knowing. Birth of Mary, remember, when the wife of Imran said, My Lord, I dedicate what is in my womb entirely to your service, so accept it from me. Birth of Mary was when the wife of Imran said, I dedicate what is in my womb entirely to your service. So not just ourselves, but even the child who is yet to be born. You alone are truly the all-hearing, all-knowing. When she delivered, she said, My Lord, I have given birth to a girl, and Allah fully knew what she had delivered. I have to get a deeper understanding of uh, these texts. Let's see. 
aqui. Eternal love and Sufis. Uh, cast out these empty thoughts from your mind and sweep away the evil whispers from your heart. Cry out, there is no power or strength except in God. Do this to protect yourself from the evil one, both in the world and within your own soul. It is the true beloved who brings all earth, earthly beauty into existence. Everything that can be sensed is ultimately temporary while he establishes that which is beyond our senses. Everything that can be sensed is ultimately temporary. Vedanta? <laughs> while he establishes that which is beyond our senses. So beyond perception is reality. But this is not from Vedanta. This is from the Masnavi of Rumiji. The love of the lover is seen, but their beloved rem remain hidden. The friend may seem absent, yet the distractions he brings are ever-present. Let go of your attachments to outward, outward appearances. Love is not reliant on form or face. Whatever you cherish is not just an empty shell, whether your beloved is earthly or heavenly. Why does your affection wane the moment life departs, the form still exists. Why then this aversion? Lover, reflect deeply on who or what your true beloved truly is. So one thing that I um, changed was there was a option to create a summary of all the search results uh, but uh, it is a bit timid you know, because there are some 200 search results so we'll do that but um, so I'm making a Lectio Divina out of them instead but I'll do one where it takes at least the first 10, 20 and summarizes them so you get the answer like yes we were looking for something but uh, the generative part of the answer you know, so in the rag retrieval augmented uh, generation, the G part is not yet fully happening. So you should take all these inputs and make a, make a common response out of that and uh, uh, fed with all of this. So anyway, I'm sure it's all different language to all of this. If you want me to upload some text into it, I can do that. Thank you. I don't like where this is heading. <laughs> How do you know this one is not AI already? <laughs> okay, let's go to Samia. Um, just wanted to say hi. Hello. Um, sorry, I, I slept quite a while during such song. Yeah, um, I was half asleep as well. Mm, yeah, like my bed is quite tired. But, uh, I feel like same father. I, I don't know, like. 
before it was feeling like satsang and the world, but now I feel like all the same. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when I come to satsang, I realize it. Like it, I don't know if it is a good thing, but I, I, I just realized that like, I don't know. I, I don't different. I, I, I miss that sense that there is just incredible like deepening it's satsang, but maybe it's good, it's just a new thing for me. Yeah. Do you carry your yeah. satsang in your heart? That is the key. That was the message of satsang in a way today that uh, in our deep love and devotion to God and our quest for the realization of the truth. We find that satsang is uh, not a physical place. It is to be in his presence, wherever we may be in the world. That is the highest company to keep. May I ask or share something further? Yeah. Uh, little bit, little bit related with this. It just came to me yesterday. Like before, maybe there were there were like some opposites, like in satsang or in holy places. I mean, something with God. There was so much like sense of like silence or holy vibrations, but or even when I come into connect with people. There was just so much, I don't know, like opposition maybe, like they were like shocked with my presence and silence and these things. Like I was, I mean, maybe you understand, but presently I feel like, as I said, everything's the same. And yesterday it just came to me like, did I fall or is it okay? Is it, I don't know. I just wanted to bring that to you. I mean, I don't know. Like because everything just feels so same. That's yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky, and that's why you have to be always uh, reliant on your heart to guide you to know whether it is uh, a trick from Maya, which is telling you, yeah, it's all same same, or it is your heart guiding you and saying that wherever you may be. God's presence can be with you. It doesn't matter what the physical environment is. And uh, it's impossible to determine for the future what what it will be. Only God can tell us that. But uh, to keep yourself safe in that way, in God's love and light, follow your heart in everything. Just follow His guidance from within you. And, uh, then, uh, whether you are in the uh, marketplace or you are in a quiet satsang hall, if you don't leave his presence, then nothing can really shake you, nothing can bring to attachment to mind. Yeah, so keep following your heart step by step. And, um, just a maybe to find and that's so important. <laughs> just, yeah, just, to oh, it was just a made up question. <laughs> Not <laughs> All right. <laughs> because I I just feel it feel in my heart when when I fall, when I need to be with God. But yeah, this 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 thing was present but not so important. But yeah. You always have to be with God. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. Otherwise, it's impossible to be. It's un. It's just unbearable. It's worse than hell, I think. Thank you, madam. Thank you. 
Hello, Father. Hello, my dear. Hello. Hey, uh, I'm going to throw a tantrum first. First you'll throw. No, let's start with the second thing then. <laughs> yeah, you can throw the tantrum second and the second first. Okay, first mm. tell me what the second is, because the second may be worse than tantrum. I couldn't think of a second. <laughs> I thought something better will come after the tantrum. <laughs> what about tantrum doubt for the day? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like this Guru AI thing, okay? Guru so... AI. <laughs> but this Guru is also already AI. Oh, there's Maya in front of you. <laughs> um... What if it gives you all the answers that you lo would love to hear? No chopping. No correction of any sort. Yeah. Just all the. That good sounds answers. like this. I think you read something <laughs> about. Uh, so I inject some choppiness in the AI responses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Ramana Maharshi's ashram had this yeah. AI thing where you had really? you could ask a question and. What really? Maharshi's answers were coming. Oh. And yeah, for, for I think it was a few months back and it was available for a few months and then something happened and uh, I don't know, the system crashed for so <laughs> many, from so many questions. <laughs> the guru got tired, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Even the yeah, guru got tired. Uh, yeah, so... But anyway, I just wanted to reflect a bit about this uh, um, absence of, of that song the with you. With oh. But okay. my kids are saying that you've just lip service cancelled that song. Huh? Huh? My kids You're, are. You my kids were so excited when I said that I'm going to be off satsang for a few months. So they were really happy. But then now looking at me, they're saying, have you really cancelled satsang? <laughs> you That's know, about your children. biological children? Biological children, yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they they would be really happy to have you more. But I, I feel, look, from my experience, I, I feel... Uh, I realize my laziness, you know, now that you're not holding satsang so often and yeah. how how much easier it is when you clean me up, I guess, of my stupidity every second day. Um, okay. And also when you remind me, hey, Karuna, I pray and stay empty and do your practice, you know, so... So like I said, I don't know if you heard the last time that uh, if the tantrum is about that, then... Uh, oh, you did say, because you said you like the twice a day option. So I don't know whether satsangs will become twice a day every day, or they will become once a month, or once in two months. That's okay. Know. It's just a reflection. I'm also a bit, maybe... Uh, I feel this international sangha that you're gathering here, it's kind of dependent on your physical presence because whenever we connected via Zoom to watch a recording, there were just very few of us. Yeah. And this there was something some... about live. <laughs> uh... Yeah. So, and I feel a bit. Uh... Just try one thing. You know what happened one time? I was on a break many years back. And then what happened is that in one satsang they played a recording, but some people joined later. So they felt like it's live satsang going on then. And they were really enjoying it because they felt like they were in live satsang. And later they realized it's just a recording. So but just don't not... announce. We won't announce whether it is live satsang mm -hmm. or not. We just put it and then we see. I, and I actually. <laughs> I had some Zoom meetings. I hosted some Zoom meetings when yeah. I played the recording and people yeah. put their hand up. Oh, really? So and then at the end, we had to explain, hey, this was just a recording. We can't really ask questions. Oh. 
So, um, yeah, it is like that. And it was very powerful, you know, to have these gatherings. Now there is this resistance in a way in myself, which I want to expose, and maybe you clear that up with your magic power. Um, magic it's, power. Just, <laughs> it's just because it's only just few of us together. Yeah. Uh, you know, my Reiki master, my first master of right, light, when he asked me to to share what he sh shared with me, I guess, and have like a little meditation group or something, he said to me this, <laughs> even if one person is coming, you don't cancel. You just go wow. for one person. A and just that stayed with me. So I have but something somehow. for you then. Hmm? Uh, then I have some guidance for you. Uh, if one person is coming, you cancel. <laughs> you know, I actually had Zoom recordings when I was for Zoom sessions when I was just by myself. <laughs> and it still felt the same. But if no person is coming, then you must definitely have it. Yeah. Time for a Advaita joke. No, no, it's more than that. You know that, yeah? <laughs> but if even one person is coming, then you cancel. Yeah. Okay, tough crowd today. It's not nothing. There is nothing to there is nothing. <laughs> make a rule out of. <laughs> huh? What happened? <laughs> I don't know. Is this the tantrum? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is okay, the opening. I start, I start also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Hey, I love you, okay? And I love your song, and uh, I don't know, bless us to just to stay together in this somehow. Um, I'm not going for 14 years exile or something like that. <laughs> I, don't, I know you're not going. And you know, I didn't write to you because I thought initially when you said you're taking a break, I thought, okay, oh, that's cool. Um, Father is having a break. And then all these people started to wish you a good rest and stuff. But I didn't feel you're, feel you're going for any rest. But so I felt, I don't feel, I, I stopped writing to you when I need your help, which I feel is stupid. Do I look rested or no? You look the same, Father. You look just good. <laughs> are, are you good? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Let's see. We may, um, the feeling was to do some more you know, walks and just um, go to some parks and things. Then I miss all of you kids so much that how will we do, how will we see all of you in the walks and things. So, let's see. I really am a bit tired of hearing my voice also, so I'd love to read some more. And um, um. As, as I'm saying this, I realize that um, we have a Vedanta library here. Most of you who have visited Bangalore have seen it, but it hardly gets used because this um, quick fix solution is there. No? I'm always <laughs> available to yeah. answer. Yeah. Anything. So I just feel it will be nice for us to um, spend some time contemplating by ourselves, digesting some of the food that we've eaten. Uh, yeah. And, and you know, when you meet us, you don't have to talk to us. We can even, like, if you feel to meet us, we can even spend 10 minutes in silence yeah. from time to time. I feel to that more and more. I say that every satsang, but then... Yeah, yeah like you don't have to... Yeah. Uh, I also, Ramana was saying that 
when the guru uses so many words, he's wasting his energy. This is true. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so Besides this is the reverse tantrum. This tantrum is going the other way. He's actually telling me to talk less than more. Uh, look, whatever, I think your presence is very valuable for us. And in whichever way you shared, um, I'm grateful. <laughs> and um, I'm also, I feel it's good that we don't take you as for granted, you know, and just it's healthy for us to keep our practice, I guess. I, I hear what you're saying, it's true. Mm. Yeah. Yes. But you know, these things are so... Um, impossible for us to compute in some way that we just have to rely on God's guidance because some may deepen in this uh, more silent period some may completely go off track so we can't really say that let, at least I can't really say that I know what is going on and what this is for <laughs> and then I just can say that this is what it feels like at the moment. And uh, I don't yeah, and I'm not, be. I'm not asking for. A, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. No, no, I know, I know, I know, yeah. yeah. So in a way, this thing. is that's the why I was crying a bit earlier when I expressed to you this thing about one or many or none, and I also found in that uh, because you said oh this some Advaita joke or something and you were laughing and I said it's deeper than that because something was could be seen some some in here that there is no rule about this thing or there is no conclusion or yeah, yeah. This is true. There is no conclusion. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it is um, mostly when we say it is going to be like that, it is just a statement of intention. No? We can't really predict. If I say we have satsang twice a day and I die tonight, then that whole prediction is worthless. So. We can only say that uh, if there's a clear sense of intention of the next move, then that can be shared. But at the moment, uh, it's just not so clear. And the way I guess you move right now was also, I don't want to be arrogant now, and I'm hoping. If there is arrogance, just yeah, may dissolve in your light. <laughs> but um, it was hard. Like initially, I thought, oh, we can keep this going and we'll share zooms and things. But then I, I, I even shared the message that sometimes it feels like I, I we had a prayer meeting followed by a recording and it seemed in that very moment that the the prayer meeting was actually enough ah, yeah. or we had a, a ashtavaka cont contemplation for 40 minutes and it, it was enough you know mm -hmm. uh, in the moment so it's also how like i i can't really say i'm inclined to um, to hang on to this idea of having a Zoom sharing every second day of a recording 
or a pre and let's watch a three hour recording or let's watch a 15 minutes contemplation. I couldn't watch a three hour recording of me ever. So if there were a few coming, I completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely toler tolerate this one live. I don't know how you'll watch a three-hour recording. Uh, maybe just 20 minutes or one hour. Uh, maximum one hour. Three hours of this rambling, boring, monotonous voice is not fun. Yeah. yeah. And every other day, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Father. And thank you, Sangha. Um, it, it came to me when we blessed Parvati's mother. Uh, it also came to maybe to ask you for uh, mm -hmm. just maybe we pray together for our brother Peter here in Satsang. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll just leave this. We've been all uh, mm -hmm. him and praying for him, of course. And mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still here, but he was here in the beginning. But uh, he sent me the most relaxed chemotherapy picture that I could ever imagine. All his time in the Zen uh, monastery is definitely paid off, I feel. Mm -hmm. so, so beautiful. Like that photo is very, very nice. Very oh, sweet. Very touched, very touched by it. So may, of course, all our prayers are that God's grace will heal all of this. And if that is His will, then in a few years we'll just laugh about these difficult times. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, so I feel like I need to end here today, but uh, and sending all my love to all of you that have your hands up and we'll meet soon. I'm not going anywhere, don't worry. Uh, it may not be as uh, as uh, predictable as earlier, but uh, we'll keep meeting soon. Right? Also, I realized that in this um, so-called break, which is, hasn't, hasn't been so, so much of a break yet, um, I'm realizing more and more that I have a long way to go to deepen in my love for God, to deepen in my humility, to deepen in my faith. Every aspect of it, as I read the lives of sages, as I read their words, and as I stay with His presence in my heart, I feel that this is a very good time for me also to really um, work on this project, work on being with God, really living in His will. So 
so maybe it is not um, maybe it is just for this man to really learn to love god a lot more whatever the other pretext may be but one thing i do know is that i love you all with all my heart so deeply and i trust fully that god's grace will keep bringing us together in one way or the other in this way also and uh, your deepening your journey towards god i will not allow that to get jeopardized no matter what else so i'm with you and uh, it's only been what we are to be speaking as if it's been so long. <laughs> we know what to a week or two weeks something like that and that also we already met once or twice in there we can sing the hanuman chalisa shri guru charan sarvoj raj निज मन मुकुर सुधार राम निज मन मुकुर सुधारी बर नौ रघुवर बिमल जसु जो दायक फल चारी तुलसी जो दायक फल चारी बुद्धिन तनु जान के सुमिर पवन कुमार रामा सुमिर पवन कुमार बल बुद्धि विद्या देहु मुहि हर हु कलेश विकार तुलसी हर हु कलेश विकार जय हनुमान ज्ञान गुण सागर जय कपीस तिहु लोक उजागर राम दूत अतुलित बल धामा अंजनी पुत्र पवन सुत नामा महावीर विक्रम बजरंगी कुमति विवार सुमति के संगी कंचन बरन विराज सुबेसा कानन कुंडल कुंचित केसा हाथ वज्र और ध्वजा विराज कांधे मूज चले साज शंकर सुवन केसरी नंदन तेज प्रताप महाजगवंदन विद्यावान गुणी चातुर राम काज करी बे को आतुर प्रभु चरित्र सुनि बे को रसिया राम लखन सीता मन बसिया सूक्ष्म रूप दरसिया ही दिखावा विकट रूप दर लंक जरावा भीम रूप दर असुर सहारे राम चंद्र के काज संवारे लाए संजीवन लखन जियाए श्री रघुवीर हर शिवर लाए रघुपति के नी बहुत बड़ाए तुम मम प्रिय भरत ही समवाई सहस्र बदन तुम्हारो जस गावे अस कहे श्री पति कंठ लगावे सनकादिक ब्रह्मादि मुनीषा नारद सारद सहित अहिंसा यम कुबेर दिख पाल जहाँ थे कवि को विद कहि सके कहाँ थे तुम उपकार सुग्री वही की ना राम मिलाए राज पद दीना तुम्हारो मंत्र विभीषण माना लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जाना जुग सहस्र जो जन पर 
दियो ताही मधुर फल जान प्रभु मुद्रिका मेरी मुख माही चल दिलांधि गए अचरज नाही दुर्गम काज जगत के जेते सुगम अनुग्रह तुम्हारे ते ते राम दुआरे तुम रखवारे भूत न आज्ञा बिन पैसारे सब सुख लहे तुम्हारी शरणा तुम रक्षक का हु को डरना आपन तेज संहारो आपे तीनों लोक आंख ते कापे भूत पिशाच निकट नहीं आवे महावीर जब नाम सुनावे ना से रोग हरे सब पीरा चपत निरंतर हनुमत बीरा संकट से हनुमान छुड़ावे मन क्रम बचन ध्यान जोलावे सब पर राम तपस्वी राजा तिनके काज सकल तुम साजा और मनोरथ जो कोई लावे सोई अमित जीवन फल पावे चारो जुग पर ताप तुम्हारा है पर सिद्ध जगत उजियारा साधु संत के तुम रखवारे असुर निकंदन राम दुलारे अष्ट सिद्धि नौ निधि के दाता असबर दीन जान की माता राम रसायन तुम्हारे पासा सदा रहो रघुपति के दासा तुम्हारे भजन राम को पावे जन्म जन्म के दुख विसरावे अंधकार रघुवर पुर जाए जहाँ जन्म हरि भक्त कहाई और देवता चित्त न धरई हनुमत से ही सर्व सुख करे संकट कटे मिटे सब पीरा जो सुमिरे हनुमत बल बीरा जय 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 हनुमान गोसाई कृपा कर गुरुदेव की नाई जो शत बार पाठ कर कोई छूट ही बंदी महा सुख होई जो यह पढ़े हनुमान चालीसा हो ये सिद्धि साखी गौरी सा तुलसीदास सदा हरि चेरा की चेनाथ हृदय महादेरा पवन तनय संकट हरण मंगल मूरति रूप राम मंगल मूरति रूप राम लखन सीता सहित हृदय बसहु सुरग रूप तुलसी हृदय बसहु सुरग